good morrow to you all. You have fallen on bad times. Brought to you by the Royal Holloway Shakespeare Society. You join me, Theo Dudridge. And me, Lynn Biles, as we bear some bardy truths. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bard Times. I am your host, Lynn, and today we have an extra special episode lined up for you. As I'm sure you've heard, our main term show for spring 2022 is Macbeth. So for this episode, I am joined by the lovely crew who have been working hard to pull it all together. If you could go around and introduce yourselves and your role, that would be grand. I'm Mizzy Taylor, I'm the DSM for Macbeth. I'm Nikki Agrius, I'm the producer. I'm Ed Chesterman, um, director. And I'm Jack Harpin, and I'm the dramaturg. Wonderful. Thank you all for joining me here. So, in terms of Macbeth, what has it been like working as part of the crew? How have you found it and your like, individual roles? And what do you inevitably want to get out of your experience as crew members? Working as a group is very nice. Working with these lot is pretty cool because they're all my friends, so I kind of like it. Um, I got roped into it by the boys. Roped into it? <laughs> yeah, if you came to my house in pure pressure, could be producer, so... Outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> outrageous. But, um, yeah, I'm pure enjoying pressure. the process so far. It's good fun. Coming to rehearsals every night is quite good because it's, like, catch up with friends. Mm. We do get work done, but we also have a nice... Being, I mean, being a part of this crew is really nice. I feel like the those of us who are in rehearsals quite frequently are... Like we have a very good rapport with each other. There seems to be, a, this crew seems to be very good at kind of communicating and organizing itself, which is nice. We're kind of slowly progressing through the, the play and I think we're making some really good progress for where we are at the moment. Yeah, I think it's kind of, it's kind of weird because you come together as a crew, you put the crew together and that's the whole process. Mm. And you put the bid pack together another full process and then you've got a third process of actually putting the rehearsals together yeah. so there's three separate dynamics that you've got to work out mm. and even before you're putting the team together you're, you're kind of saying okay who could I work with who would work well where that kind of thing it, it it's a weird one you can never predict how it's going to go mm, definitely but thankfully so far <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, and I'll just reiterate the points that everyone else has made. I think it's it's been really great working with this group of people. Um, I think I think we all work pretty well together as a crew. We all know what we're doing and we get it done, and we still have a good time doing it. I think something that's really uh, exciting about this project in particular, in comparison to. Um, I don't know, well, I, I think there's sometimes you're on a crew and one person or two people or however many people um, don't quite see the vision mm -hmm. and there's what's really nice about this crew and I think that's partly down to our wonderful director Ed and how <laughs> kind of how clear he is with, with everything that uh, he's kind of envisaged of when he got us on board for instance, mm -hmm. um, kind of coming to us with quite a well-formed idea already is yeah just everyone seems to be behind the vision of the show and I think that's really great and I think we made a big effort in auditions to make sure that was the same with the cast mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we were very clear with what we wanted to do because we're all aware this is not a traditional version mm -hmm. of Macbeth mm -hmm. we've, cha we've changed a hell of a lot it's it's quite hard to get on board with that immediately. So we, we're very happy with the way the crew has, mm. the way the shadows have, the way the, the the cast have, just every everyone seems to be kind of on track and on board, and that's mm. great. That's really great. Mm. So we, we've done something slightly different with this show than what uh, is normally done on campus with shadows, where normally shadows will follow a member of crew and kind of follow them around um and you'll have like separately like a shadow director shadow md shadow choreographer shadow dsm shadow producer whatever um and honestly having done quite a lot of shows having crewed a lot of shows having been in cast for a lot of shows something that i have noticed is a massive underutilization of shadows to the point where 
I mean, if one person can normally do the role of, say, like a director or a DSM, or, uh, yeah, it is nice to have that person to help you out. But still, ultimately, that one person could do that job. And there's, there's a certain level of like, okay, well, if I'm, say, producer, and I've made it all of the event proposals... What are you What are you doing here? Uh, like, how do you How do you shadow produce? Uh, and so, what we've done instead is to separate them into two distinct roles. We have the shadow creative officer who works with the DSM, the uh, director, and the dramaturg, and then we have the shadow production officer who works with the publicity, the producer, and the stage manager. And that means that they have much more of a wide experience. It's a more about learning the all of the roles Mm. on campus um and also i I think it's just a a great chance for people who aren't don't necessarily have a lot of experience crewing which Mm. let's face it as none of us are professionals (laughs) uh is all of us i think i think it's a really great opportunity to learn a wide variety of things rather than just um the one job especially after coming out of COVID and there being this sort of couple of years where no one has been able to do shows. It's really, mm, it's really good to get people on crew in the ways that we can now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. absolutely. It's a good idea because I know personally that I've been using Theo as my port of call <laughs> because he has a lot of experience with DSM. For sure. So I'm, because we've had that COVID break and there hasn't been a natural continuation of people do, in those crew roles, you're going to have to, like look outside or try and generalize who you go and ask advice for yeah. or to that's that makes sense well, yeah to kind um, of bridge yeah. that experience gap yeah yes, totally definitely. yeah because there's a year and a half there that mm. we couldn't do in person shows mm. so it's and like all the people that did do it before yeah, have left, left. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Really, it's With rebuilding the, isn't it yeah mm, absolutely yeah with the exception of the crew from last term and Theo and I, there are, but other than like those of us who are currently on the crew, uh, there are, there's no one really who's done, who has, who has experience directing, dramaturging, producing, whatever, other than those of us who are friends with alumni. So we hope, we hope it's going to, they're going to learn a lot. Uh, they've been great in rehearsals so far. We, we've loved having them uh, for all the two days that we've had them. <laughs> So I suppose the next real big question is why Macbeth? What was the initial draw to Macbeth as a play? Macbeth is, I would, I would say Macbeth is one of the most well-known mm. plays mm-hmm. of Shakespeare. So it's, it, for, for practical reasons, it makes it a whole lot easier to actually audition as many people as we can because people will come to audition for Macbeth, not in the same way that perhaps they would come to audition for, I don't know, something lesser known Mm. so that first step is quite important for us to do to bring more people in to audition i mean how many do we have this year 25 27 signups 27 signups yeah um which is the most that any shakespeare show has had since i've been here so so obviously in at fundamental levels the putting on Macbeth is great in terms of why Macbeth now, I think the way we've the way we're presenting Macbeth and the idea behind it is the most important component of why we're telling the story. It's like Macbeth is traditionally seen as well, Lady Macbeth in particular is traditionally seen as a, a Machiavellian uh, trickster in the background, a shadow who uh, basically plays Macbeth for both of their purpose. We're kind of reversing that yeah. to now look at toxic masculinity and how that inf- impacts and talks to the character of Macbeth, yeah. um, which we think is pretty pertinent to today, really. Mm. Kind of going on from that point, going to back to what Jack was saying earlier, so this version of Macbeth is going to be quite different from what people are used to. Why is this kind of the concept you want to explore and why, you, why have you chosen it? Again, talking about foundations, it, Macbeth, the story itself, gives a good foundation to to step off from the ideas we wanted to explore. And so the ideas we wanted to explore were things like right-wing radicalisation, toxic masculinity, um, things that are important to today's culture uh, in particular. And 
we found that there was no better place to explore that than in banking industry or uh, the stockbroker industry, which is rife with uh, it's rife with horrible toxic <laughs> culture. And I think you need to look no further than all of the films that are based around that. If you look at something like. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Have you seen or, the Big Short? Uh, have, you, have you seen the Big Short? <laughs> Watch the Big Short if you've not seen it. Uh, or um, something like American Psycho, which is kind of exploring similar thing, similar themes of uh, kind of toxic masculinity. It's, it's just this almost breeding ground for right-wing radicalization and just this kind of hyper-masculine culture that we're seeing a lot of at the moment. And it's worth pointing out that the place we're saying it is not a um, glorification of, of... Oh, absolutely not. No, of, no, 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 of no, no, the no. Big Short or of the Wolf of Wall Street. We're saying the complete opposite. We're saying, look at these guys, look at these people that are pretty much effectively controlling a large proportion of our everyday lives through the money that they are spending, the money that they are receiving from other businesses. And the whole system is toxic itself without even getting into you know the roles of the people themselves the the businesses that are that are involved in these these circles are so deplorable that it's depressing mm. Mm. it is quite depressing it is quite depressing <laughs> yeah it's because they reduce people to numbers basically mm. and statistics they don't they don't huh that's, big short? that's from the big shot. It is. <laughs> I didn't. I only watched it recently. Um, if you can tell, because all my references are gonna be that. Yeah, they reduce people to numbers, and they don't see necessarily the bigger picture because they're just kids with toys, basically, just yep. messing around, going, "Oh, we can make some money off of here," and not actually seeing the wider consequences. Yeah. And in that, it's a very high pressure kind of environment. It's very toxic. Like it's the same with the law kind of industry where it's there's so much expectation on one or two people in an office that it just breathes very nice atmosphere isn't it really i think you you really hit the nail on the head there i think with talking about them seeing it as a game i think that's part that's something that we definitely explore with macbeth and i think the players of macbeth explores on its own without our kind of guys that we're putting on top of it this idea of gotta climb gotta climb gotta climb like there is and uh, that kind of relentless desire to rise through to kind of gain rank just as you have in like video games like it's is this constant desire to i want to get the next I want to get the next payout. I want to get the next payout. I want to get the next payout. And the play on it, the players, as kind of the base play, explores that well. And we kind of the setting explores that on its own is like a very kind of um, indicative of, indicative of that just on its own. So we thought they were a perfect kind of match. Uh, just uh, in some kind of horrific um, <laughs> bundle of uh, just this kind of capitalistic nightmare that is uh, our the what we're trying to explore and, and critique, we should say. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it almost becomes in that point like a pastiche of what the original source material that mm. you're going off from as influences. Is, and I suppose there's almost that level of dark comedy which you're exploring a bit at the moment. Yeah, I yeah, think this, this is something that it's something that uh, I think when Ed came to us with the idea, this was a massive thing for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a big deal. It's like you I didn't. Mean, there's, tra there's tragedy and comedy, isn't there? There's always mm. tragedy and comedy. But mm. also, I think something you said. I literally one of the first things that Ed said to us was, "We're not cutting the porter," <laughs> um, and it was, and it's because there is so easy to turn a play like Macbeth into just a miserable slog, and we really didn't want to do that because there's a lot of comedy in there, yeah. and there's comedy in the sense of kind of making fun of these absolutely grotesque characters mm. in, in almost uh, similar to I think the, the film that we talked about I speak in film references <laughs> if that's not clear <laughs> uh, but the film that we talked about before which kind of tonally this is 
somewhat similar to as well as something like the big short would be like birdman yeah. kind of that thing where a lot of the characters are just gross as people absolutely just like very indicative of the problems of the systems that they're in yeah. and um it's funny to watch them get their comeuppance even things like uh succession and Veep yeah. and these are all these are all comedies that are we're not we're not laughing with these people. These people are like Jack says, are deplorable. They're just so horrible that it's okay to laugh at them because they're just big old bags of doo doo. <laughs> it is because when you're laughing at it, it's just lu- like ludicrous that they have so much power. Mm. Um, so I think that's also a bit of kind of comedic value in that in that these people control the world and yet. They're absolute, like, terrible human beings. So from personal experience, I kind of know how difficult pulling together an entire concept is and how much effort that can take. But what sort of process was that like for you guys? Uh, well, I, I think it took a lot of research. Um, there was That was something that, as uh, Ed and I worked on the concept quite closely because, well, I mean, because dramaturgy, that's kind of what that is. I think it was important for us to make sure that we properly represent the situation so that we're not, number one, so that we're not being clumsy about this. I think that's what's incredibly important when you're dealing with something as not not necessarily offensive but risque as toxic masculinity or as a kind of... um, right-wing radicalization and just topics like this in general, I think you need to be careful with how you do it. And I believe that the way we have done it is through a lot of care. And it was done, for instance, cutting Lady Macbeth. I know, well, not cutting her, changing her from being a character in as like a person to being a character in terms of a an aspect of Macbeth. Um, I know there was... Um, we've had people ask us about our decision behind that and about the reasoning behind that. Um, And there was, I think it was a deliberate choice because this is a look into how uh, someone can become radicalized. And I think the character of Lady Macbeth, as we talked about, is a character, like it is, is a, character that radicalizes someone in the original play like that is uh, she kind of rallies Macbeth onto her kind of uh, her not ideology but like um, her cause and so uh, there were talks at some point of turning all of the Lady Macbeth bits into um, this was very early days but we talked about turning all of the Lady Macbeth bits into like news um, news kind of reels and things like that. Um, But we ended up going away from that because of some of the fantastic monologues that we wanted to keep and we wanted to make sure we honoured. It's also also a very stupid idea. (laughs) (laughs) It was mine. (laughs) But it was a very stupid idea. But it was definitely something that... So so we wanted to be incredibly careful with this. Um, That being said, also, I think it's going off... There was an academic discussion recently ran by um, Bartime's own Theo Dudridge that, um, that um, was based off the kind of the what if TV show uh, from Marvel and it, kind of the idea of what if Macbeth but no witches um, is is something that I think I found really interesting when Ed kind of pitched it to uh, he didn't pitch it as that. <laughs> um, what if Macbeth but no witches <laughs> the entire concept that's it <laughs> <laughs> just outside the boy going what <laughs> but I think it's re- I think it's a, a really interesting opportunity to look at the play in a different way and, and uh, I mean I am by far no Shakespeare purist uh, I don't believe in sticking to like I I like adaptations that take the story and change all of the the words in it um i like versions that switch 
seemingly key parts of everything around. One of my favourite versions of Midsummer Night's Dream is the one that was at the Bridge Theatre a little oh, while ago. Yes. Um, with, I can't remember her name, but Brienne of Tarth. Mm-hmm. Um, Gwendolyn and Christie. There you go. There you go. I, I enjoy messing with Shakespeare. Like, it's been around long enough. We're allowed to mess with it. Yes. I suppose going on from there, have there been any sort of particular challenges you've faced so far in this process? If so, how have you sort of overcome them? I think something that we immediately we had we had a bit of a mm. bit of a um, nightmare when it came to publicity early on, just mm. because we had a crew member drop out, mm. and so that became a whole thing of oh god, we need to fill the hole. How do we like that? We we have our like we have a ship that is taking on water with a big hole in it. How on earth do we do this? You making cupcakes in the corner. Uh, me of making rehearsals. cupcakes in the corner oh of rehearsals, which I am by no means a graphics designer. So it was. They so turned it was out well. Much, it's fine. Oh, I making appreciate that. Making cupcakes makes it sound like you were actually baking. If oh only no, well. no, I was the graphics for for the bake sale. Yeah, on PowerPoint. <laughs> Just every um, so often, mid scene, it's Jack going, "I don't know what to do about this cupcake." <laughs> Great, yeah. Um, oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think so. In terms of faith, has been so fantastic as as publicity, and we really kind of appreciate everything that she's been doing. And we recently recorded the trailer for the show, which we're really excited to put out the the cinematic trailer because we're planning to do two. We're doing the cinematic trailer, and then we're also going to do an in rehearsal one. But now we have Adonia, who's actually part of the cast on crew as our graphics designer, and I believe. Could be wrong. It could be today. It could be in a few days. But the graphic, her first graphic for the um, for the film, film night. night is going to come out soon, and that looks absolutely stunning. Much better than anything which I could is put on together. The 16th of yes. Yes. Come. Which is on there. Please oh, come. Please come. Yes, we are um, unsure of which lecture theatre yet. Keep your eye on the socials. Challenges. Challenges uh, being. Challenges. There's um, challenges. There's loads of challenges. Scheduling. Every it's every week there's a new challenge. <laughs> okay. God. Scheduling hurts my head. I have realised that being um, doing scheduling that I never want to do scheduling ever again as part of my future job or life or just anything. I have realised that I never want to use Excel ever again <laughs> in my life. I hate I hate it. I think it's a bad application. So we take pride in making people <laughs> learn that they are going to hate. Them. They're hating learning, the jobs that they do. They're learning um, valuable life skills as they do. I, mean, so sure, I can handle yeah. the risk assessments, yeah. but Excel can yeah. go away. I don't <laughs> like it. It's so confusing. I was trying to upload it to the bid pack when we were still bidding this, and I had to call Jack and be like, hey, do oh, I do was, this? Yeah. And I, I, just, I, I, could, I still couldn't figure it out. I had to the, end up emailing the, it to you. The day of oh, submission. Oh, we maybe like, like 20 minutes before yeah, yeah. we had to submit it. Yeah, I was like, oh, I swear we've not had the budget through yet. <laughs> I couldn't have it. And Nick was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> do I do this? I think I was sitting still in bed <laughs> at about 12, just going, okay, so click the, <laughs> click the, the save as button. Um, <laughs> very much a lack of sleep on both of our parts, um, being on and like messenger audio, being like, Jack, what's going on? Oh, I had oh, also yeah. just had a good portion of blood taken out of my body from the do- <laughs> for the doctor. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. It's no more... Um, Kind of challenges than any other show faces in terms yeah. of sharing cast members. Uh, we have the lovely Anna that uh, we share with Drama Society. Uh, something that we do really appreciate is we have a good rapport with them, and we they they've been treating us with a lot of respect, and we appreciate that. Um, and just just I think this show would have a lot more difficulties if we didn't have so many lovely people associated with it and also so many committed people associated with it. I think uh, a really good example of that is the cast. Um, pe- lots of people come to mind. Uh, one in particular, like Callie, mm. uh, really great um, work ethic. Something that isn't actually uh, having like now it's my third year here um and it is expected that crew members stay for a full or well, uh, crew members who are, need to be in rehearsals so mm. directors and dsms normally um that four hour period is not only a big chunk of your life over the course of i mean it's 20 hours over the course of a week but also it is it's, it's i don't get me wrong i love rehearsals and i think 
I, I get a huge amount of joy out of it and it's a huge stress kind of release for the week. Um, being able to see people that we like, being able to in- create this wonderful piece of theatre that we're creating. But also, that is a large chunk of time to have to... It's a part-time job. Yeah, yeah. It's to have to like book your time around, to make your, to move things around socially, but even to meal plan around, yeah, trying to yeah, make sure you meal eat. Plan. <laughs> Yes, Eat before six or after ten, like pesto. that is a long pesto gets used. Yeah, we do yeah. give people breaks. It's not like we just keep. Oh, for sure, for sure. Times. They are um, allowed to. Eat. Abs- absolutely. Well, ca- <laughs> yeah, cast, ca- off, cast, crew mem- on. cast members. Uh, obviously, we have we have a twenty minute break in the middle. Twenty twenty five minute break in the middle most days. Um, well, we always have a break. I'm saying most, most of the time it's mental. it's. Yeah, and for cast, it's a lot more free because you're not used all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, with the exception of someone like Kira or Theo, who are on stage a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it, but even, I mean, they still get more breaks than, say, we do, because we have to constantly be on it and constantly be giving feedback and whatever. And I, I think that's. I, I don't think it's mentioned enough. We are so. How, we are so. I'm not so. I'm not patting ourselves so on the back. We are so good. But it's Let's just. Go. It's so I think, hard. I think it's, it's an. Always me. Job. Look. <laughs> oh my god. I just think it's an underestimated <laughs> difficulty for if you are going to be on crew and you mm-hmm. should be aware of that as a <laughs> as a challenge. <laughs> like because but what well, I think the crew is hard. But yeah, I just think for for instance when I first directed in my first year, I think. I had no idea going in, uh, and say Theo and I talk about this. Uh, have talked about this a lot before when we were on crew together. We didn't know that that's what we what we had going in. So, um, I just think it's something that absolutely we should mention and kind of shed light upon. This is not something to just go into uh, without any kind of recognition of the challenges you are going to face because it's not as it's not as as simple as, oh, let's just turn up and have a great time because although, we, mm-hmm. yeah, although of course we turn up and have a great time. But also, I would like to say that those twenty hours is significantly more because we're planning what we're going to yeah. do. In rehearsal, yeah, of course. Yeah. We're scheduling. We have to feel a mental mm. capacity to go into rehearsals. That all being said, we do have a great time, <laughs> and, and I, I think that is a testament to the people on the crew, the people on the cast. Uh, just is really nice to I feel like there's a great energy in the re- in the rehearsal room all the time which is is yeah it's just great yeah, it's mm. quite nice when we're doing really depressing scenes oh for sure and then as soon as we're like oh, and was, pause and then everyone yeah. just starts laughing or like you know mm. makes a joke or something mm. just to ease the tension yeah. like the mood yeah mm. which is it's very nice to be in yeah fashion. yesterday's rehearsal was quite like that I feel there was there was like quite a lot of well it's just there was a lot it's a big scene where Macbeth act act five scene five Macbeth is kind of losing his mind and and is kind of already uh, Lady Macbeth is gone he's alone properly alone for the first time and it's just it was quite a quite an intense scene but. We actually had a really great time doing it, mm-hmm. and uh, Adonia and Theo uh, and all of us who were at rehearsal, I think we all had to make a lot, put in a lot of energy, because also this this thing is very energy demanding. Like it's very energy demanding to be that focused and to give what the actors give, because the actors are giving so much every rehearsal, and that is also really really great as as a crew member. Um, it's really great that the cast are giving as much as we feel like we're giving. Like it's yeah. ultimately this is a collaborative process. Mm. So, because yeah, going off from that, the kind of my next question anyway was, so rehearsals are well underway now. Um, not to give anything away necessarily, but how is it really going? Yeah, it's alright. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going really well. We're I'm, I'm not joking, it's going really well. We're, we're pretty much... We're pretty much there. Yeah. In terms of blocking, we're pretty much there. Yeah, we're pretty much good. blocked. At the end of this week, we should have blocked the entire T of the play, mm-hmm. which affords us a little bit of... Okay. Yeah, it means that we can schedule ourselves around supporting not just our events, but the events of the society as well. Mm-hmm. I think, um, for instance, this this Friday, 
we're going to we've blocked out time so that we can go to the workshop the voice acting workshop run by will will lawson mm-hmm. there is a sword. sword fight a sword fighting workshop ran by imogen small happening soon I think. Yeah, and there's a D&D event. Yeah, there is a D&D. Yeah, there's a D&D event. On the yeah, we love it. <laughs> Run um, by someone, you know. Yeah, around by me. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's why. Uh, yeah. But yeah, rehearsals are going great. We're enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are going well. I think the thing about it is, is uh, you are, like we were just talking about, you're in there four hours a night for five days a week. And so it can take a toll on not only you, but your actors as well. So you've just got to be aware of, of how much pressure you're putting on them, how much pressure you can put on them. Because mm. obviously we want it to be like a, 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 a melting pot of creativity as such. Um, and often you need pressure to do that. But at the same time, it's this is a university production, and we want to have fun. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to break people. What do you think at the moment is the best thing about Macbeth? <laughs> Our fantastic fundraisers that you should definitely <laughs> go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They sell any day. No. Yeah. No further <laughs> answers needed. True. Let's move on. I think the culture of the cast and crew is probably the best thing because mm. that's a great answer we all get along yeah mostly no I'm joking <laughs> um, we all get along there's been no arguments yeah. so far yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the culture it's, it's really nice to come into a rehearsal room and like everyone want to be there mm. um, yeah. everyone getting along everyone having a nice time um, everyone's just, smiling. Everyone's smiling. Even when you're grumpy, you come in, you're like, oh, well. Like, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. Leave it at the door, come in. And everyone is kind of like that. And it's very nice to be around people who also like Shakespeare. <laughs> it's oh. been too long, really. A year and a half. <laughs> a year and a half away, away from people is it kind of kills yeah. your mm. capacity to spirit actually, bit, yeah, your spirit yeah. and your. So mm-hmm. to be in a room with people again is just yeah, it's lovely. the most joyous thing. Absolutely. Mm. And we, yeah, the, the thing about this cast as well is that everyone kind of wants to hang out with each other outside mm. of rehearsals mm. as well. Yeah. So there's people in the group chat. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we'll go to the pub after rehearsals or on the weekend yeah. or something and yeah. just, you know, hang out with each other mm. because it's, you know. And it's, it's nice, nice to create those bonds outside of just rehearsals yeah. as well. Mm. I feel like yeah. it. It helps in. Re- I don't know. I haven't been to many rehearsals, but I feel like it helps with being with it in oh, rehearsals. Um, I, th- I think having, a- having actual friends, and not just like people Nikki. that you solely I'm work with. Nikki. I think yeah. I think that's a really great point because I think sometimes you get caught. Up. I know uh, personally the way that I, when I'm directing, the way that I direct, and certainly the way that I've kind of aded and stuff like that before, it has been very much while I'm in rehearsal, I'm my role, and then when I leave rehearsal, I'm me. But the issue is, is when you get to know someone as your role, mm. like you, I have uh, some of the people that I've worked with in the past, um, I've been very close to them as a director, but then when it comes to actually knowing that, like them knowing me as me, it's very different. And so I think that's, it not only is really great in terms of being able to see people outside of the rehearsal room and see, see people as kind of as ourselves and not having to, put on some kind of caricature um but also um i think also when it's like when you call cut or when you call like when you halt a scene instead of it then being like cool i'm waiting for my direction like silently what are your notes uh like it's then we have a like we can very easily have like a laugh and mess around and stuff like that but in a in a controlled enough way that we get a lot of the work done um, just really, yeah, I think the culture is great. Mm. To yeah. summarise, the culture is great. Wonderful. Yeah, so I suppose for one final point, if you could kind of say what you're looking forward to and what potential audience members are looking forward to, what would that be? I'm really, I, I find this really interesting as a politics student, the, uh, the way that you've... Um, dealt with the kind of echo chambers that people can fall into. Mm. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that on stage. 
and how you think you're going to do that. I think I think something that, <laughs> something that uh, I think actually going off that I think something that we've talked about a lot that I cannot wait to 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 <laughs> get into when we're actually in the space and we have access to the lights and the sound and the whatever um, is how we use tech because that is a large part of like light, lighting and sound and stuff like that is actually a massive part of our concepts in terms of what the show is going to look like and how we're going to explore things like echo chambers by creating these kind of mashups of news reports and podcasts and all of these things that we've been writing and recording and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think that's something that I'm really excited to get into, which is slightly out of our reach for now, but it's only a few weeks away. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all pulls together as a bigger picture of wider play because you know when you're in rehearsals and you're focusing on one scene you don't necessarily think about um, well me anyway in my role <laughs> I don't necessarily think about oh how's this gonna look compared to like act one scene one when we're doing act five scene five mm -hmm. um, but when we're in tech rehearsals dress rehearsals like seeing a full run through it's going to be really interesting and then that will be where we can finesse and smooth it all out and it will look really cool so please come along. I think the thing about the process is that you uh, you go four weeks of standing something up, mm -hmm. blocking it out, of trying to extract as much as you can from it and then as soon as you get that one moment when it's on stage, you get to watch it blossom into what you perceived it to be and what other people perceived it to be. There's something nice about that. That's deep. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you all for giving us some behind the scenes insights today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you all on. It's Thank been, it's been great yeah. being here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Fun hour. laughs> Um, now, if you would like to come along and see Macbeth, we have performances on March 6th, 7th and 8th. That's a Sunday to Tuesday at the SU. Tickets are now available on the Shakespeare Society page on the SU website. So get them whilst you can. We'd love to see you there. Thank you for listening to this episode of Bard Times. I've been your host, Lynn. And in the words of the Bard, Come, go to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is right for shaking.